Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. This is a part of our gospel lesson for today uh, from Luke chapter 10. The 72 returned with joy and said, Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name. And Jesus replied, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. God's holy angels are an unseen reality that inhabit the universe that he created. They worship and praise him. They are his messengers and servants. They are a part of our world, protecting the people of God. An example of God's holy angels doing the work he has given them to do is found in our Old Testament lesson for today, in Daniel chapter 10. In answer to Daniel's humble prayer, God sent an angelic messenger to him. And the messenger said to Daniel, Do not be afraid, Daniel. Your words were heard by God, and I have come in response to them. The angelic messenger said to Daniel, I have come to explain to you What will happen to your people in the future? And one of the things revealed to Daniel through this messenger sent from God was the future rise of Alexander the Great. The messenger described Alexander the Great as a mighty king who will rule with great power and do as he pleases. Daniel's angelic messenger also described a demonically inspired attempt to stop him from reaching Daniel with this important revelation about the future of God's people. But a second angel sent from God intervened and helped him reach Daniel. That second angel was Michael, described as one of the chief princes. Michael is an angel of high rank, one of the chief princes, the Bible calls him, an archangel. The first angel explained to Daniel that he was delayed for 21 days until Michael intervened so that he could continue his journey, continue on his way. You know, the better we get at building telescopes, the more we see how large and complex the cosmos is with its trillions of galaxies. And perhaps a similar thing is true of the angelic realm. There's a lot going on that we know little about. Although we have limited insight into their workings, God's angels are an unseen reality that inhabit our world and do his bidding, like Daniel 10 describes. And still today, they are his messengers and servants. They protect the people of God. They are spiritual warriors in the battle of good versus evil. And they are an important part of God's creation. Now in our gospel lesson for today, 72 men that Jesus appointed and sent out on a missionary journey returned to him with joy. And similar to the archangel, St. Michael, the 72 were victorious warriors in the spiritual battle of good versus evil. And they were glad to serve our Lord in this way. They eagerly and joyfully reported back to Jesus, Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name. And confirming the truthfulness of their report, Jesus said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Jesus saw Satan instantly defeated by their faithful work done in his name. He told the 72, I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. The 72 are equipped by Jesus for still more victories in the church's battle of good versus evil. The archangel St. Michael and the 72 battled evil, 
and the church today continues to do so. Paul wrote in Ephesians 6, Our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. In one very down-to-earth place where this spiritual battle of good versus evil continues today, one place where this battle often rages is within the church. You know, we sing the hymn, or we sing in the hymn, the church is one foundation, that the church here on earth is by schisms rent asunder and by heresies distressed. Schisms and heresies in the church are wounds that the church on earth endures as a result of the spiritual battle of good versus evil that continues in our day. Another very down-to-earth place where this spiritual battle of good versus evil often rages is within the hearts of Christians, people like us. You have within you a spiritual nature that delights in righteousness. Our spiritual nature that God put inside of us at our baptism delights in whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, excellent, or praiseworthy. And when we, the church, serve God and our neighbor, motivated by all these godly virtues, we do so under the protection of God's holy angels. You have a spiritual nature that delights in righteousness, yet at the same time, our old sinful nature, inherited from Adam and Eve, delights in wickedness. An unhealthy and foolish curiosity about evil caused Adam and Eve to let down their guard and helped lead them into sin. And it is in our nature to have an unhealthy and foolish curiosity and desire for sin and evil and to let down our guard. And we earn God's eternal wrath when we say yes to those sinful desires that originate from the devil and the fallen world and our own sinful nature. Another very down-to-earth place where this spiritual battle of good versus evil often rages is within the hearts of Christians, people like us. Thanks be to God for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who suffered the wrath of God that our sins deserve. He suffered in our place on the cross as our substitute. <clears throat> as the Son of God, Jesus is the King of angels. And we sing about Jesus that he is Lord God of Sabaoth, meaning he is the creator and leader of armies of angels and archangels. Yet as King David foresaw and wrote about in Psalm 8, for a season the Son of God made himself lower than the angels, over which he is God and Lord. Humbling himself for a time and being made lower than the angels was a part of his saving work for us and for our salvation. As his death on the cross drew near, you remember how Jesus knelt in prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane. He was in anguish, the Bible says. Sweat like drops of blood fell to the ground, the Bible says. And then an angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him. The angel strengthened him, its creator and Lord. That's the humility of Jesus. The Son of God was made lower than the angels, so that by the grace of God he might taste death for everyone, the Bible says, for Adam and Eve and for all of their descendants. The Son of God became one of us to suffer the wrath of God that our sins have earned. Jesus, a lamb without spot or blemish or stain, died in our place as our substitute, 
On the cross, he was forsaken by God, abandoned by the Father, as he suffered the eternal separation from God that we deserve. At Golgotha, the place of the skull, no angels would be sent to strengthen him. Instead, Jesus will suffer for the sins of the world alone. Jesus died and was buried, and with that our debt was paid. The debt being paid, his state of humiliation could now come to an end. And when Jesus descended into hell, he did so in glory to proclaim his victory over sin, death, and the devil. He went there to prove that, as prophesied, the seed of the woman has now crushed triumphantly the head of the serpent. And on that first Easter Sunday, angels were sent to announce the triumphant resurrection of Jesus to his followers. Serving as God's messengers is one of the many things that they do. And the resurrection of Jesus, witnessed by both angels and humans, is good news that his church still proclaims to all the earth today. The resurrected Jesus is now King of kings and Lord of lords in his full glory. He is no longer lower than the angels. He is the King of angels, and that's what he acts like. He is the Lord God of Sabaoth, armies of angels. And you are his church. And he and the angels that do his bidding will lead you through this world's dangers to the place that he has prepared for you in heaven. And we will join the angels, archangels, and all the company of heaven in joyful and eternal song. In Jesus' name, amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen.